one earth, which would mean any growth of the economy beyond SS would be unsustainable. We'd have a situation where, the, where if we grew the economy beyond SS, the throughput that would be required would be such that at least one of our two sustainabil sustainability rules would be violated. I'm also arguing that, so point nine might be somewhere here, if it was, that would be sustainable ecologically. I'm suggesting that there's a more desirable scale again, what you might call the optimal scale of the economy. And that's, of course, where the difference between benefits and costs is at a maximum. Now, I've got this thing called GPI, and that's because there is now a new indicator that does measure the benefits and costs of growth. Okay, you subtract the cost from the benefits. It's called a genuine progress indicator. And it's at this S star, the optimal scale, that uh, we ought to be operating our economy. So not just that we shouldn't just be reducing the global economy to the ecological limit, but in my opinion, to this economic limit, the optimal scale. So what's the evidence so far in terms of this uh, relationship between where we are and uh, the optimal scale of the economy? Uh, OK, um, here is uh, some, uh, some studies, GPI studies, genuine progress indicator studies, of uh, six wealthy nations. This came out in about the mid-1990s. Uh, and what you've got here, you've got uh, the thick line is GDP and the thinner line is GPI. And you can see, now these have been, uh, they're not in monetary values. Both indicators, of course, are measured in monetary values, but they've all been set to the, the uh, 1950 at uh, an index value of 100. Uh, but what they show is that the GPI tends to go up as GDP goes up, but then a point is reached where, as GDP continues to rise, the GPI starts to fall. And it's at that point where the GPI starts to fall that effectively the economy goes beyond its optimal scale. So you get to the stage where, OK, so you grow your economy, so in this phase here, uh, the difference between benefits and costs rises, so your GPI goes up. Then you reach this point where the GPI is maximised, and if you grow your economy beyond that, the GPI falls. So where the genuine progress indicator starts to fall is effectively where these countries surpass their optimal scale, S star. And for... Uh, most wealthy nations for where, uh, where studies, GPI studies have been conducted, this appears to have occurred in the 70s and 80s. It also occurred uh, at a, about a per capita GDP of about $15,000 to $20,000 per person, about US dollars, US international dollars, at about 2,000 prices. Now, that appeared to be good news for the world's poor countries because it suggested that you could grow your economy up to about a per capita GDP of about $15,000 to $20,000, and you were pretty confident that your GPI would go up with it. Unfortunately, that's not occurring. In recent times, there have been some uh, studies, or GPI studies of some poorer nations. Uh, myself and a colleague at uh, Deakin Uni, uh, we managed to get some people uh, to calculate uh, some genuine progress indicator, or do uh, conduct genuine progress indicator studies of uh, some Asia Pacific nations, uh, China, Thailand, Vietnam uh, and India were the four poorer nations. Australia, New Zealand and Japan were the three wealthy nations. And what we found was with the four poorer nations, two of them, the GPI has already started to fall, despite the fact that per capita GDP is well short of the fifteen dollars to $20,000 threshold level. Um, now, why has this happened? Well, one of the reasons why this appears uh, to be happening is that low-income nations are attempting to grow their economies in a full world. Right, so they're already growing, they're starting to grow their economies in a world that is already full of human beings and human-made objects. Whereas high-income nations initially grew their economies in an empty world. Um, and as a consequence, the marginal cost of growth is now higher for these poorer nations than what it was for the wealthy nations. And so they've reached their economic limit to growth, S star, much sooner. It's occurring at a much smaller scale than it is for the world's uh, uh, rich nations. Uh, here are, in fact, the GPI values for these seven uh, wealthy nations. Uh, here you see Australia peaking in about the mid-70s. This is on a per capita basis. It, uh, it did fall, it sort of flattened out a bit, but it's actually started to fall uh, a little bit since I've done my update. Uh, New Zealand, I think it peaked about 1981. Uh, Japan seems to be an unusual case. Um, it has actually peaked. 
It's peaked later. The person who, who did the, uh, the Japanese study uh, has basically argued that uh, there needs to be some sort of modification to the genuine progress indicator because uh, the way in which it's calculated has tended to give uh, Japan uh, or uh, give the appearance that Japan's doing better than, uh, or at least in terms of its, its approaching of this optimal scale relative to other nations, largely because Japan relies very heavily upon imported resources. And one of the problems, if there is a weakness of the GPI, it seems to be that uh, if other countries are providing resources for your country, then, and that's coming at a significant ecological cost, that's not reflected, it's not picked up that well in the GPI. So if you had an open economy type GPI, Japan, Japan's GPI would probably be, be a lot lower and probably would have fallen at uh, a much earlier date. Now, these are a bit difficult to see because of the relative scale of everything, but uh, Thailand actually uh, uh, reached its uh, per, uh, peak per capita uh, GPI around about 2001. The blue one here is, uh, is China. Uh, that doesn't show up very well, but I have isolated China by itself here. And you can see this, this line here is per capita GDP. So since about 1990, the per capita GDP of, of China has grown at a very rapid rate. But its per capita GPI uh, has peaked around about 2001, 2002. Even though its per capita GDP uh, in terms of international dollars, US dollars, at 2000 prices is only about $5,000 per person. So nowhere near the $15,000, $20,000 per person. Um, OK, well, mine's a, ended up being a little bit shorter than the others, but uh, effectively uh, what this suggests is that high-income nations not only need to reduce the scale of their economies for their own benefit. Remember, you've uh, seen in the case of uh, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, they've already reached the, uh, the optimal scale. So by growing their economy beyond the optimal scale, their GPI is actually falling. So reducing the scale of the economy of these uh, richer nations would actually improve the well-being of people within those nations. So there's a good selfish reason uh, for reducing the scale of the economy to obviously a, a smaller but steady state economy where you would focus not on producing more stuff but producing better stuff. Uh, so the wealthy nations not only need to reduce the scale of the economy for their own welfare but to provide... Uh, the world's low-income nations with some sort of ecological space so they can enjoy at least a brief welfare increasing phase of growth. So they're not bashing their heads against the wall, trying to grow their economies up to ours and not uh, getting the reward as a consequence. So the overall conclusion is uh, that there's a need to make a transition to a steady state economy uh, where you focus more on the way you do things, not which means uh, producing better goods, producing them more efficiently, uh, focusing on the way in which we organise ourselves in production, so we have more leisure time, we have a better distribution of income and wealth, um, rather than just producing more stuff, um, which of course leads to environmental degradation and all these other social costs as well as ecological costs. Um, and of course that implies a need to reduce the scale not only of the economies but highlights the urgency with which we must also move to a sustainable, steady-state population. That's basically it. Mm.